Hello Set Apart Saints, this is David and I am making basic videos about the key concepts that I cover in my Revelation Timeline Decoded book and just working through a basic script. If you're listening to audio, you're not missing much. I pretty much speak out everything that's on the screen so and then add to it. So um, just covering basic videos, kind of setting up the narrative of Revelation. I know this is a Revelation series and I haven't really taught about the fulfillment of Revelation yet, but I'm getting there. Just trying to set it up to give it proper context, proper understanding, so we, we have a good um, perspective of what we're looking for in the fulfillment. So, In this video, I'm going to talk about Messiah's parable of the sower. And, you know, I had read the parable, obviously going through the Gospels and such. I've heard it in church. But it wasn't until I was in a network marketing training that it really hit home for me. And um, it was a blessing to be in that company. MLM wasn't really my niche per se. I'm kind of um, introverted. So standing on stage and doing all that stuff, that was never my thing. But uh, MLM has worked a while for a lot of people. But, you know, the blessing was that I can look back now and see that I had some amazing upline and they were Christian and they were awesome. And I would go to the training sessions and I learned a lot. And one of them, um, from a guy named Danny, um, taught me how to apply the, um, parable of the sower in network marketing. And, and it's the same thing here. It applies the same as we try to share the truth about the fulfillment of prophecy. We're going to see the different soil types, right? And people, and we need to know uh, how to handle that and which group of people to focus on. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Um, over the last 10 years, wow, on Facebook especially, I've tried to help people see the historical fulfillment of the 70th of Daniel, the Olivet Discourse, and Revelation. And you know what? I've been called every name in the book, and mostly by Christians, which is just crazy, but that's just the way it is. When you speak something that is outside of their belief system that they've been programmed to believe. And I covered this on my last video about how their minds have been programmed with the futuristic explanations. When you give the historical explanation, they just can't comprehend it. And they think you're a heretic because you're teaching the opposite of what their pastor teaches and what John MacArthur, David Jeremiah, all those people are teaching. So they just call you every name and told me I'm, I'm of the devil because I teach these things. I'm not saved. I'm going to hell. I've heard it all. And it does not phase me at all. Um, in fact, it, it well, um, it does affect me, but it, it affects me in a good way. It drives me. So, um, you know, and, and I'm just giving you reference. I'm not bragging about anything here, but I've written three prophecy fulfillment books. But even today, like in the last couple of days, I have posted responses and things on Facebook and, and even on YouTube on my videos. People are commenting and they're doing the same thing. And they're telling me I'm wrong and on this and on that. So I'm just giving you a reference that, you know, if they're going to do it to me and I've authored three prophecy books, they're going to do it to you. So it, it's just not us. That's the point of this whole training. It's not us. It's them. And, and I'm not just throwing mean accusations. I'm just saying they're just not the right soil, right? They're not at the right place to, to get it. So, you know, we're all going to be rejected. It's okay. It's okay. It's really, you know, once you once you get what your role is, you can move on. So people block me. People mock my explanations even today. You know, even, you know, after I've gone through all this research and everything. So like I said, I don't tell you that to see so you feel sorry for me because it really doesn't affect me. Um, it's that, you know, like I said, that's not totally true. It actually drives me to work harder. So people that have come against me and there's been some major people who have come against me it just spurs me on. So it does the opposite. It, it makes me work harder to do more research to prove them wrong through scriptural, you know, not just to, for me to be right and them to be wrong, but just to prove the case of the fulfillment, the historical fulfillment of prophecy. So, so that we're defending the faith. I'm not defending me. I'm defending the truth of scripture. So I just want you to understand you're going to re get rejected. I am going to get rejected and it's okay. It's not about us. It's about them. And, and the problem is on their side. So, so the question is, can I tell you a secret? <laughs> Cause this, you know, popped in my head when I was making this video, what I've learned through the years is that people who know you, you know, family, friends, they know you from high school, whatever it is, they don't want you to know the truth about prophecy fulfillment. 
if it's contrary to what they believe. And that seems crazy, but that's just the mental makeup that people have. If you understand it, then it implicates them because they don't. If you understand it, then they have to admit that they've been misled by their pastors, <laughs> right? Think about, I want you to think about where they're coming from so you can help them, right? So that's, that's where these people are coming from. They've been programmed, as I covered on my last video, through countless sources. Their pastor, on the radio, on TV, through books, through study Bibles. They have been programmed to believe the false futuristic explanations. So if you can prove out the historical narrative, then that creates a problem in their mind. And if you're able to prove out the you know, seventh week of Daniel, most of Revelation, you can prove that it, it's been fulfilled then they have to come to the realization that most pastors are deceived. That includes John MacArthur, David Jeremiah, Chuck Swindoll, Hal Lindsey, their personal pastor. They have to come to the sobering thought that seminaries and Bible colleges are infiltrated. And that's just mind blowing. And they don't wanna know that. that, that crashes your world. For a lot of people, that crashes their world. I don't wanna know these truths either. I don't want to find out I've been deceived or misled. I won't say to say deceived because that seems like it's on purpose, but we've been misled by those people. And I don't want to know that. But my bottom line is I want to know the truth. And if the truth is that I have to find out that all my pastors were, were misguided, then I want to know the truth because I'd rather know the truth than be ignorant, right? Because that's going to play out really, really bad in these end times being ignorant. So show me truth. I pray for truth and that's, maybe why I've been shown a lot. So I just want to point out these built-in mechanisms that cause people to defend their beliefs. People don't want to know these things. And it'll crash their worldview. It'll make them not even know who to trust or what to trust. So that's the mentality they're going through. And so I want to go through the parable of the sower in Matthew. I'm reading from Matthew and and Messiah, you know, is given the parable and he has the multitude gathered together and he spoke in parable and, you know, about the sower going forth. And when he sowed seeds, some fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. And some fell on stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So the disciples asked him why he spoke in parables. And he said that it's to hide the truth from those who should not understand it. And here's the thing. That's the same way as Revelation, right? So, so he said that about his parables, but it's the exact same way in Revelation. It's written with symbols, right? That point to a, a literal fulfillment. But if you don't understand the symbols, then you're either going to think it's all symbolic or all literal, and you're not going to be able to see it. It's just the exact same way. He's hiding the messages from those who should not understand it. So... Uh, the disciples came to him, you know, why do you speak in parables? And he answered to them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them, it is not given. And so I want you to, I just want you to plant that in your brain when you're talking to people and I'm not speaking down, I'm not judging, I'm not anything, but I'm just saying, when you share the truth with someone and they can't receive it, just know because this is all the accounting of the father. It's nothing to do with us, but they, it might not be given to them to understand. Okay. So you can try all you want, but it's not going to happen because it has not been given to them. So just realize what Messiah is saying here for whosoever hath to him shall be given and he shall have more abundance, but whoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So look at what it's saying. To, to him that has, more will be given. So it's saying that those who hunger for truth, those who pursue truth, those who are teachable, guess what? They get more truth. 
right? And those that think they know the truth and they're not looking for anything, it, it's hidden from them because they're not even pursuing it. So more is not going to be given. And in fact, what they already know, any truth they already know might be taken away. So Messiah is speaking clearly to us, giving us a frame of reference for sharing the gospel. It's the same thing. You share the gospel, you know, all these concepts that I'm speaking about, I'm speaking about prophecy, but it's the same thing with the gospel. So we have to understand what our role is. And, and we'll go through the soils here in a minute. Messiah's parable is more relevant than ever today. And, and listen to Matthew 13, 14 to 17. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and ye shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. You just got to keep that in mind. You, you know, if you found the historical narrative, and you've been shown that, you're blessed. And other people can't see and they can't hear it and it's blocked out and we're not going to change that only the holy spirit can change that he says and for verily i say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them by hearing ye shall hear and not understand and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive for this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed does that not describe people today you look around you try to share truth and that's it they either can see it or they can't i mean there's a great division going on right now and i, I really think the separation is whether you're hungering for truth, seeking for truth with a teachable spirit. Um, so let's see how Messiah's explanation of the parable of Sower applies to sharing the truth about prophecy fulfillment. So, you know, he's talking about um, the sower and when anyone hears the words of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So in Judea, I went and visited there in what, night. 1998 i believe and uh 50 year anniversary of uh of israel and in judea there are paths that go through farming properties which gave people a shortcut instead of making them walk all around the property right so they the farmers would allow people to walk through their property well obviously that creates a hard path so when the farmer casts seed out in the field some falls on the hard path and it doesn't take root when you share the truth about prophecy fulfillment, when you share the truth about the gospel, some people are so convinced that they know the truth that they're not able to receive an explanation that is outside of their belief. The enemy has made their heart hard, right? So there's your hard soil. So, and we'll camp out on this in a sec, but do you spend time with that kind of person who's not open to receiving any truth? No, you move on. Messiah said these words, about the end times church age of Laodicea, which we live in, which helps us see how many people are like the hard path. Messiah says, because thou says, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, right? And have need of nothing. So they, they think they know prophecy fulfillment and they don't need your explanation because they're good, right? But they know not that they are wretched and miserable and poor and naked and blind. So, that's that's my experience to a T. Either are looking for it or you're not. You're open to being taught. <laughs> you're teachable or you're not. Uh, Messiah is saying that people that think they're rich in truth about prophecy fulfillment and they have no need for a different explanation. Sadly, many have been deceived by the false futuristic explanations of prophecy fulfillment so that they will be caught by surprise about how the end times plays out and they will be exposed just like the foolish versions. I mean, the oil in the lamps of the fullest virgins, the oil is the scriptures. It's scriptural truth. That's what lights your way. If you don't understand prophecy fulfillment, if you don't understand how the end times are going to play out, if you don't understand the proper context of Messiah's return, you're going to be caught by surprise. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be naked. You're going to be without oil. That's what Messiah is saying. But he that receives the seed into stony places, the same as he that hears the word. And he has joy in receiving it. Yet, 
he doesn't have root in himself, but he dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, uh, by and by he is offended. So in Jerusalem, sits up on a plateau. So there's rocky ground, which underlies the soil. Some seeds in the field, you know, it's going up a slope or whatever, and then there's rocky ground underneath. So the seeds land on that rocky ground. There's not much depth to the soil, so the plant can't take root, and it withers away quickly. And this describes people who show interest, or feign showing interest, whatever, they show a little bit of interest, but then that just quickly fades away. So when you follow up with them, hey, did you study this? Did you study that book? You know, this article I sent you, they're lu lukewarm. They're really not interested in making an effort to pursue truth. And that's, you know, that's the type of soil they are. And the next part says, he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that hears the wording and the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So this describes people who seem excited to learn and they start to pursue truth, but then the things of life distract them and occupy them. So if he gave them a copy of a book, if he gave them, you know, a video to watch or whatever, and you follow up with them and they're like, no, I didn't have time or this or that, or something came up and all that stuff, that, that's just describing who these people are. The cares of life or, you know, the, the, the pursuit of truth of prophecy fulfillment is not their priority and life chokes it out. And that's fine. It's who they are. Um, so it describes people who hunger for truth, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that hears the word and understands it, which also bears fruit and brings forth some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. So this describes people who hunger for truth and pray for it. So that when it's presented to them, they pursue it with vigor. These people know that the truth is not just for them, right? So they're not just going to keep it for themselves, but they're going to go share it with other people. So they bear a harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100. So it's the same thing. Let's apply it to prophecy fulfillment. Your role is to be the farmer, to spread the seeds of truth and let the spirit move in people's lives. People determine what kind of soil there are, and you can't do anything to change them. So you have to stop trying. It's not in your job description. Just pray for them and let the spirit work in their lives. If... You badger them, right? If you gave them a video to watch, if you gave them a copy of the book, whatever, if you badger them and tell them that they are wrong, you will only cause them to defend their beliefs and make it hard for them to change their mind. If you bring it up every time you see them, they will find ways to avoid you, right? Just share the truth in love, make it easy for them to pursue truth and concede that they are wrong, right? And, and I'm not saying we're trying to be right proven them wrong i'm just saying when they discover the 70th of daniel is about messiah and it's not about the end times you know you need to have to make that path easy for them to see it and to come back and say wow you know what i was misled about that we we've all come through that right i i was misled about all that stuff and i had to come to a certain point and go wow i was wrong i was misled so if you spend your time trying to get hard soil, shallow soil, and thorny soil people to seek truth about prophecy fulfillment, you'll just end up frustrated. Just share the truth and move on. They will contact you when they're ready. Make it easy for them to do that. So I just want to apply one thing that I learned through the years. Um, it applies almost to everything, and it's called the 80-20 rule. It's Pareto's principle. It states that 80% of the people will produce 20% of the results and that 20% of the people will produce 80% of the results. And you see this at church, right? 20% of the people are producing 80% of the work and it's, and at work, and you see it played out everywhere. It works amazing. And, and in fact, you can continue it on and apply the 80-20 rule to the 20% and then you end up with about 4%. So 4% are really producing 96% of the results. But if you spend a lot of time Focusing on hard soil, shallow soil, thorny ground people, trying to convince them against their will, you'll end up frustrated. You will bear the burden of their attacks. They either don't want to hear a different explanation or they will resent you for trying to guilt them into pursuing it. So spend 20% of your time with these people, planting seeds to see if anything takes root and grows. Right? They'll contact you when they're ready to move forward. Otherwise, leave them alone. Keep in mind this advice from Messiah. He says, give not that which is holy into the dogs, which... Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. That's what happens when you try to push people too hard. 
they're just going to turn on you. They're going to call you names. They're going to attack you. So just stop. It's not your job. And on the 80, 20 roll, spend 80% of your time with the fertile soil people, the people who are seeking truth and are teachable for they're the ones who deserve your time and they will bear fruit for the kingdom. So, and then the fertile soil people will cross pollinate others and they will bear a great harvest. So, you know, that's, and maybe you've noticed this. I don't know if you know me on Facebook, but I will camp out and I will spend all the time that's needed with someone who's seeking truth, right? So on the opposite side, if someone's opposing me, they're telling me I'm wrong, you know, I'll pursue truth um, to comment, to try to help them see truth. And I comment not just to help them see truth, but anybody that's reading the discussion. But at a certain point, you can just tell that someone's not really learning to learn, to, to you know, learn new truth from you. And you just got to step away because that's not a productive use of my time to continue giving explanations to someone who is not looking for truth, anything outside of what their belief system is. So, but camp out with the people who are looking for truth. They deserve your time. They will multiply you know, the harvest. So I don't chase people and I don't try to convince them against their will. I just share, uh, when there's opportunity and what I've noticed during the last 10 years is that the people who hunger for truth, who pray for it and seek it out, those people put themselves in my life. Not that I'm anything special, but I'm there teaching truth. And so they'll come alongside and, 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 you know, send me a message, an email, a personal message or whatever and say, wow, you know, I've been listening to your studies or reading your studies for years or whatever. They seek me out because they're the, they're the fertile soil people, right? So then you're attracted to other people who are fertile soil people. So they're the people who are listening to this part of the video, <laughs> right? Because the other soil types would have, they wouldn't even have listened or they would have clicked away already, right? So... <laughs> It's just, you know, I, again, I'm not trying to speak down to people. I'm just saying this is who people are. It's okay. It's who they are. And either it's given to them to see it or not. Either they search it or not. And I just want you to know your job description. So you know the truth because you seek it because you pray for it. And the Heavenly Father is delighted to fulfill your desires for His glorious truth. And I say this in almost every video, but when the fertile soil people understand the historical fulfillment of the seventh week of Daniel and Revelation, then they will proclaim it to the world and there'll be a great harvest. This will cast down the power of the enemy to set the captives free so that many are redeemed for the kingdom in the end times, for a great harvest for our Heavenly Father and beloved Messiah. And I want to end the video with this mandate in Ezekiel 33, 3-6 says, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be on his own hand or on his own heads. So he heard the sound of the trumpet, took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. So in other words, what it's saying is your job is to blow the trumpet. Your job is to put the message out there. And those that hear the trumpet and do not take your warning, you know, they're going to bear the consequences of that. But that's on them. It's not on you because you share the truth, right? But those who hear the trumpet and take warning, then they deliver themselves, right? But then it says, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take away any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Wow. Right? So <laughs> I don't want that on me. I don't want to be responsible for people not knowing the truth, whether it's the gospel, whether it's the fulfillment of prophecy, whatever. Our role is to share the truth. They're going to determine their soil. They're going to determine what they do with it. But you have to share this, the, the, the truth with them. So that the responsibility is on them, not you. You don't want to be accountable for other people, including your pastor, because you didn't speak up, because you were afraid, because you were scared. You don't want to go there. You don't, you don't want to violate this mandate. It's telling you right there, their blood is going to be on you, right? So they're not understanding. But see, so in other words, on Facebook or wherever, if I share the truth with someone, I know that now they're accountable. It doesn't, if they listened, great. If they didn't, 
than they did what they're going to do. But they're responsible for it because I put, I planted seeds, right? So the responsibility is on them. I played my role. So I just want you to understand that. I'm going to start teaching on Revelation soon, I promise. But I really just wanted to help you understand as we go forward, as you share videos, as you share the book, um, you're going to get rejected. There's going to be different soils of people. They determine that, not you. Don't chase. Just love, pray, share the truth. I've included a link to my 7th week of Daniel 9 decoded book and Revelation book. Um, please like the video. Do the thumbs up if it helped you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so. I'm going to publish more videos. And like I said, I'm going to start really getting into Revelation here in a bit. I just really needed to set up the proper context. So love y'all. Shalom.